The sumi that anxiety is a signal of some kind of danger, usually some kind of conflict. Then one uses anxiety as a clue toward finding out what is the conflict the patient's having. We don't necessarily want to, quote, eliminate anxiety with medications or snow the patient under something. That would be like uh, damaging the thermometer rather than changing the temperature of the room. One doesn't want to destroy a very sensitive instrument, but make use of it to see what it can tell. Now, the patients usually have their characteristic ways of dealing with anxiety. It might be by forgetting something or in attending or neglecting things, or um, some cases, uh, recurrent thoughts come in. Uh, I remember a patient who had uh, concern about chips of glass that uh, she might swallow that would cause cancer. And so she would periodically get concerned about the chips of glass as many as other kind of obsessive concerns that she had. I would uh, educate the patient to try to notice the sequence of what happened just before the symptom appeared. Here's again a difference in dynamic therapy. Other therapies often tend to try to get rid of the symptom, tell the patient to ignore it or to think of something else or to substitute a different kind of thought. We try to have a look at what the symptom points to. When does the patient hear voices? What is the context of that? Rather than giving them a device to keep the voices out of their head or something. The, uh, um, keeping the anxiety at a tolerable level uh, is best done by not pushing things faster than the patient or yourself can manage them. Um, it takes years of experience and work in this kind of field where one can actually feel rather comfortable in doing the work most of the time. Uh, anxiety is especially high among neophyte therapists. If they're in supervision, they wonder what the supervisor will think. And there are supervisors that seem to chastise their trainees uh, rather than try to help them understand what's going on. So getting back to the patient who uh, was concerned about glass, after noticing sequences, she found that uh, she was noticing glass when she was going through the cafeteria line on her tray, she looked. And then she, by then, had internalized my efforts to look at what preceded it. And she noticed that a patient who was behind her in the line had been served a salad out of turn. She said, I was angry. No, I thought of glass. So that quickly, her anger was dealt with by the substitute of glass. This same patient, after a long time in therapy, uh, I had an interruption in the office by a phone call while she was there, and I dealt with it, and uh, then uh, hung up, and she resumed talking and so on. 
And I said, um, I noticed that you uh, hadn't mentioned anything about the phone call interruption. She said, well, I know you're a busy doctor and uh, they have to get in touch with you. And you answered it. I said, yeah, but was there any other side thought on that? Well, I did want to hit you over the head with the goddamn telephone. <laughs> These kinds of things are exploratory rather than of abolition. I didn't try to get her to abolish. And I didn't get defensive about it. But simply, let's have a look. And this requires a kind of an openness on the part of the therapist. And that's the, maybe the beauty of the whole thing of doing psychotherapy is one learns a lot about oneself in the process of doing therapy. If you find yourself resorting to certain techniques or formula as to how to handle this or that with a patient, the chances are anxiety is in the neighborhood. Going back to Freud's paper on negation, he said on a short paper in which he explains that people often admit something by first denying it. I don't want to do thus and so. And uh, I was interviewing a patient uh, for a group, and uh, he he was complaining about his uh, roommate uh, being sloppy and messy and so forth and so on. And I was uh, wanting to hear more about it, and, uh, especially about how he felt about this. And uh, he said, well, I didn't mind, uh, but uh, it did begin to bother me. He said, uh, I wasn't angry at him. And, and, so I said, well, in what way were you not angry with him? Well, I didn't feel like I would strangle him or choke him into that. <laughs> there, there's an example of people giving expression by action rather than verbally. And uh, you, could, you could often get people through this kind of negation thing to say, well, I didn't want to do this, no, nor that, and so forth and so on. And they real off a whole lot of things that they're acknowledging through their negation. It helps, and this was a point I didn't make about anxiety, is that it helps focus on the conflict. And that's what dynamic psychotherapy is, is really a psychotherapy of internal conflicts. And it's a good idea fairly early in therapy for the patient and therapist to begin to focus on what are the kind of core conflicts or immediate conflicts that need further work. And usually, uh, often, as these get resolved, the patient feels better and so on. Now, they may not be completely analyzed, but they may be doing well enough to stop treatment until something else comes along later on that can always return for further work. So we don't have to be perfectionistic about creating a perfect patient. We're all going to have our conflicts anyway. The question is, can we be assisted in learning how to deal with them, to recognize them, to adapt, to find other solutions? The conflicts don't go away. The way you deal with them does.